from Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. And it is the news for February 21. VK2GPK Greg, the WIA president, will have an important announcement for all amateurs. And Scott, VK3KJ, with board approvals for the Commonwealth contest and more news on forthcoming elections. With news of the United Arab Emirates Hope mission returning its first picture of Mars as Hope entered into an orbit around the Red Planet, it makes the UAE the first Arab nation in history to have a scientific presence at Earth's near neighbour. But Australia also has a presence. NASA's latest Mars mission, with Perseverance, has two very interested Australians, Abigail Allwood and David Flannery. Well, my invention is going to land on Mars in a few days' time. As NASA's Perseverance rover got ready to land on the Red Planet this week, Abigail Allwood has started to have pinch-me moments. ABC Science has a great article written by Janelle Wool on this expedition. Dr. Orwood is the first woman and Australian to be a principal investigator on a Mars mission. Perched on the arm of the robotic rover is a key tool called PIXEL, short for Planetary Instrument for X-ray Lithochemistry. This little box, about the size of a large lunchbox, is designed to take close-up images and scan a postage stamp-sized area with X-rays, looking for chemical signatures of life in a 3 billion year old rock. Working with Dr. Orwood in the US for the first year of the project was David Flannery, then a postdoctoral student of QUT, the Queensland University of Technology. Dr. David, like Dr. Abigail, also studied ancient rocks in the Pilbara. Australia's critical role in the mission? While Dr. Orwood's team has been working on Pixel, engineers at JPL and the Queensland University of Technology have been building software to crunch the data as it comes down from Mars. The plan is, once data started flowing, about 90 days, Martian days, after the rover landed, a team of 500 scientists at Jet Propulsion Laboratory and QUT will analyse data around the clock until at least April 2023. Australia will pick up where we leave off when California goes to sleep at the end of the operational day, Dr Orwood says. That's so important because that makes Pixel more relevant to the whole tactical decision-making process, including the selection of samples. Back on Mother Earth, or just a few metres under the surface, a trial to assess the boosting of GPS signals in Sydney's road tunnels has been given the go-ahead, with funding approved and federal laws amended to accommodate the project. The trial which aims to improve safety within the tunnels by providing more reliable GPS signals via provision of repeaters, will be conducted by Transport for New South Wales, says a post by criticalcoms.com.au. It was federal law that banned GPS repeaters due to concerns they could interfere with external GPS signals if not operated correctly. Transport for New South Wales joined with other key agencies to make a submission to get the law changed. ACMA has agreed to amend the law, which also enables a number of road tunnel operators who track staff using underground Bluetooth beacons to change their comms needs. Bluetooth requires users to have an authorised application for detecting and locating the beacons, so where provisioned GPS repeaters could open up underground tracking to all users of smart devices. This is the Wireless Institute of Australia and VK1WIA. Hello, this is Greg, WI President, with an important WI announcement concerning all Australian radio amateurs. Recently, the Spectrum Regulator, the Australian Communications and Media Authority, known as ACMA, issued a consultation document which details three options concerning the future of amateur radio in Australia. Significantly, the ACMA's preferred option is changing to a class licence instead of the current apparatus licence. This is a non-trivial change and has long-term major ramifications on the radio amateur service in Australia. Note that a change to a class licence was rejected in a 2004 determination issued by the ACMA's predecessor organisation. Any changes to the Radio Amateur Service licensing framework as proposed as the preferred option in the ACMA consultation are likely to be permanent and irrevocable, 
Hence, it is vitally important that the WA response reflects the views of our members as well as, to the extent it is feasible, the views of the wider radio amateur cohort. Next week, the WA will be releasing its position paper on the consultation and initiating a poll to gather feedback from the amateur community. The WI board and its supporting volunteer technical team have been investigating and researching the implications of the various options and burning the midnight oil since this consultation was released. The technical team has a great depth of skill and experience in the radio communication sector and its regulatory environment. The WO will be seeking feedback from its members and other interested amateurs via a registered poll. You must be registered to receive the poll with only one vote per ACMA ID. Please note WI members do not need to register. You are pre-registered and will automatically receive the poll via a Memnet email. In line with our previous practice, this poll will be open to all Australian radio amateurs via pre-registering to receive the poll. I also ask the club registered presidents relay this registration information to their members as soon as possible. You can register by entering the URL poll .wia.org.au into your internet browser. We have had feedback from some Chrome browser users being unable to access the registration page, in which case use the URL tinyurl.com slash WIA poll. That's all one word, WIA poll. Remember the WIA, now 110 plus years young, can only continue to support the amateur community with your support. Until next time, this is Greg, VK2JPK. This is WIA Director Scott Williams, VK3KJ, and it's nice to be appearing on the broadcast this week on behalf of the WIA Board. It has been another difficult week in my home state of Victoria after just coming off a sudden hard lockdown due to COVID-19 that lasted five days and ended last Wednesday evening. I know several clubs had scheduled ham fests and again have needed to cancel or postpone these to a time where there is more certainty. Hopefully, it will not be long before we can all get together again and search for that special bargain or item, but importantly, saying hello and sharing a yarn or story with all of our many ham radio friends. As reported in past broadcasts, there will be an election this year for director positions on the WA board for 2021. The number of nominations exceeded board vacancies, therefore triggering an election. The WIA returning officer is John Marshall, and the returning officer has declared that there were eight valid nominations received. Last Monday evening, the returning officer and independent witnesses drew the order and placement of listed names on the ballot paper. Ballot papers will now be finalised and distributed to all members shortly. All members are strongly encouraged to vote and help shape the future of the WIA. As I have said in past broadcasts, serving on the WIA board is a wonderful way to participate and help support and develop this wonderful hobby. It goes without saying that it is your WIA and your vote is very important and, of course, counts. Finally, the WIA board has approved the use of the WIA call signs VK1WIA all the way through to VK7WIA for the 2021 Commonwealth Contest, formerly known as the British Empire Radio Union Contest, which is one of the longest running contests in the HF contesting world. Look out for all seven call signs across the band on the weekend of the 13th and 14th of March. That's it for me this week. Always great to appear on the broadcast and stay safe and stay well. 73's Scott VK3KJ. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. Available on RF and on demand 24-7 from the wia.org.au website. Now a look at education. Queensland, all USA grades of licence will be held at the Sunshine Coast Amateur Radio Club March 13. All details on vk4wis.org or contact Trent 
That's vk4ts at wia.org.au. In Tasmania, REIST's next Foundation Training and All Licence Assessment Day will fall on Saturday, March 27. You can grab your copy of the Foundation Licence Manual from the Caltech service station Amy and Main at Moona for $35 cash. And please let Reg VK7KK REIST Learning Organiser know as soon as possible you'll be coming along. Phone Reg... 0417-391-607. It is the WIA National News, and remember our three Ws. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Now, international news with Jason, Victor Kilo 2, Lima Alpha Whiskey. Hello, and as always, our international news is with thanks to IARU, RSGB, RAC, Southgate Amateur Radio Club, ARRL, NZART, Amateur Radio Newsline, and the worldwide sources of the WIA. We begin this week's international news with news from the ISS. US astronauts living aboard the ISS orbital outpost on February 14 broke the record for the most days in space by a crew launched aboard an American spacecraft. They surpassed the record of 84 days set by the Skylab 4 crew in 1974, NASA said. Four ham radio licensed flight engineers, Shannon KD-5 Delta X-Ray Bravo, Sochi KD-5 Tango Victor Papa, Victor KI-5 Bravo Kilo Charlie and Mike KF-5 Lima Juliet Golf docked the SpaceX crew Dragon spacecraft to the US module last November. March QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo. Due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, face-to-face ham radio gatherings have been cancelled all over the world. An alternative event online is the QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo, which will be held on March the 13th and 14th. You'll have a choice of 80-plus speakers to listen to. You can take part in a live kit-building workshop by buying kits in advance walk through a virtual exhibition hall featuring all the usual traders and meet up with fellow hams in virtual lounges using the latest technology. This is a ticketed event. Your ticket will allow you to visit the event for the following 30 days. News from Europe now to France. The French National Society announced growth in licence holders. France's National Amateur Radio Society, REF, recently reported on licence figures for the last five years. The number of licences at the end of 2020 in France was 13,956, compared to 13,482 at the end of 2016. This represents a slight increase of 3.4% over the five-year period. In the same period, 1,200 candidates sat their 40-question multiple-choice licence examination and 748 were successful, a pass rate of just over 62%. In January 2019, the fee for applying for or renewing the licence was abolished and it's likely this has resulted in more amateurs keeping their call sign. In the UK, the RSGB Get On The Air To Care construction competition has been judged for projects made during the autumn 2020 lockdown, the Christmas and New Year holiday period or the early 2021 lockdown. The society was delighted to receive 27 entries and the standard was very high. To reflect this, the judges award four prizes rather than choose one winner as originally planned. The winner, Gordon Lean, Golf 3 Whiskey Juliet Golf, built a 25-watt HF SDR transceiver made using GNU radio and modules bought on eBay. The other three awarded prizes were for construction of primarily 3D-printed LEO satellite antenna rotator, an NFED half-wave antenna coupler, and a Langstone SDR transceiver based on the design by Colin Derbidge Golf 4 Echo Mike Lima. Collins' clever design is based on a Raspberry Pi 4 computer and the analog devices Pluto SDR module. You can read about their winning entries on the RSGB website. Wrapping up this week's international news to the USA, weather gone wild might be an apt description of the conditions in many parts of the US, with sub-freezing temperatures in areas not prepared for that sort of thing. Aberrant weather seems to be happening across many U.S. regions. Snow has fallen in Texas and Oklahoma, accompanied by record-setting temperature readings. 
The severe weather has caused power and telecommunications outages and ARRL amateur radio emergency service volunteers in southern Texas have been called up by served agencies to help fill the resulting communication gap. ARRL Emergency Response Director Paul Gilbert, KE5 Zulu Whiskey, who lives in the Austin, Texas area, reports that ARIS members have been very, very, very busy with the storm-related traffic. For WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Ham Radio Operational News. It's a contact sport. I'm Felix, VK4FUQ. International DXCW contest is beeping out right now, February 2021. The CQ Worldwide 160 metres SSB contest is next weekend, February 26 to 28. The International DX Phone Contest, March 6 and 7. Commonwealth Contest, BEIU, 13 14 March. WIA John Moore Field Day 2021. March from UTC at 100 hours on Saturday 20 to 059 hours Sunday the 21st. The CQ Worldwide SSB WPX Contest, March 27 28. The CQ Worldwide CW WPX Contest, May 29 30. April 25 a.m. CW Anzac Day. Monday 25th from 9 a.m. on 7125 kHz a.m. DX Window. John Charles Kiyakakis, VK3YP of the Hellenic Amateur Radio Association of Australia, said that he and some friends have been trying to obtain a landing permit for VK0M, Macquarie Island, which is number 12 on Club Log's DXCC Most Wanted list but he considered it's nearly impossible to get permission from the Tasmania Parks and Wildlife Service because Macquarie is a protected nature reserve. Pride Radio Group is operating the special event call sign VI2021 Pride throughout the Sydney Mardi Gras. Now Luke, VK3 UKW with another Pride Radio Group announcement. Is your radio club inclusive and welcoming? Pride Radio Group is an international group that aims to further acceptance and inclusion for underrepresented groups in amateur radio. We have recently launched a club endorsement program aiming to connect those new to the hobby to radio clubs which are trusted and supportive. For more information and to register your club, visit the club endorsement page on the website prideradio.group. For Pride Radio Group, Victor Kilo 3, Papa Romeo Golf, this has been Luke VK 3, UKW. The RAF is flying high to celebrate its 100 years on March 31. The Royal Australian Air Force call signs the target. RVI 100 AF, March 1 to 29 May. VK 100 AF, March 1 to 31 August. France. QRV is TM 18 AAW from Macon until next weekend, February 28, in celebration of the 18th Antarctic Activity Week. QSL to home call FA DVD. Also active until next Sunday 14 is Special Events Station IQ3 DD to recognise the FIS Alpine World Ski Championship being held in Cortina. Activities on 160 to 23 centimetres using CW, SSB and various digital modes. This includes some activity on satellite QO100. QSL via Bureau for IQ3DD. Coventry is the city of culture in 2021. GB1COC is being operated on behalf of the Coventry ARS by Brian G8GMU. He will be mainly on the 80 metre band using SSB but also 2 metres FM and digital speech modes. Operation now until the 13th of March. Vietnam, 3W. QRV is 3W9FAR from Da Nang until March 21. Activity is in. Spare time on HF using SSB in various digital modes. QSL to home call SP5FAR. For VK1WIA National News in England where the rain is pouring down. I'm Felix, VK4FUQ.
This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, vk 3 F. Hello and good morning. Worldwide special interest group news. Final frontier. NASA has selected SpaceX to provide launch services for the agency's Power and Propulsion Element, PPE, and Habitation and Logistics Outpost, HALO, the foundational elements of the Lunar Gateway. As the first long-term orbiting outpost around the Moon, the Gateway is critical to supporting sustainable astronauts' missions. PPE is a 60 kilowatt class solar electric propulsion spacecraft that will also provide power, high speed communications, attitude control and the capability to move the gateway to different lunar orbits, providing more access to the moon's surface than ever before. HALO is the pressurised living quarters where astronauts who visit the gateway, often on their way to the moon, will work. It will provide command and control and serve as the docking hub for the outpost. After integration on Earth, the PPE and HALO are targeted to launch together no earlier than May 2024. The total cost, approximately $330 million. The completion of a complicated upgrade of an ageing antenna at the Deep Space Network in Canberra has restored full contact between Earth and the Voyager 2 probe. WIA news editor Graham filed the story originally for Amateur Radio Newsline. The completion of a complicated upgrade of an ageing antenna at the Deep Space Network in Canberra, Australia, has restored full contact between Earth and the Voyager 2 probe. The trailblazing spacecraft, which was launched 44 years ago by NASA, had been crossing the heavens in relative silence after a 70-metre dish there known as DSS-43 was shut down and dismantled for a needed refreshing. In space, as on Earth, however, few things are immune to the impact of the global pandemic. The ordinarily large team of experts NASA would have sent to Canberra for the makeover was limited to four for safety reasons, and the reduced size of the team delayed the upgrade's progress. With DSS-43 being the only antenna capable of communicating with Voyager 2, the probe had few options for communicating. It could only transmit to the smaller dishes in Canberra, but was unable to receive any commands, especially those that could have fixed problems if any had been detected on board. After a test message was sent last October when DSS-43 was partially reassembled, NASA and other experts were optimistic. Now, with DSS-43 back in business, the long silence is over, but two-way contact still requires something of a wait. Round-trip communication between Earth and the faraway Voyager 2 takes 35 hours. Worldwide Special Interest Group's ARDF. For a good time in Townsville, remember it's Tony for Radio Direction Finding Fun. If you're in the vicinity of the Townsville region on Saturday, June 19th from 1pm and want to get involved in a fox hunt or radio socialise in a nice part of Townsville, then Tony, VK4TJS, wants to hear from you. You have until Thursday 16th of June to get your attendance numbers in for the fox hunt. Plus, there will be activities for all family members to participate in during the fox hunt and things will end up with some in-flight catering. To cater for the event, Tony needs to know your attendance numbers. And you need to quiz Tony further regarding details about the fox hunt. Who do you have to call? Tony, VK4TJS, of course. His number for a good time in Townsville is 4767-7137. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA, EU012, Gareth, M0MOL, will be active as M0MOLP from Shetland Island while working there during the months of February and March, mainly in the evenings after work, and QRP with a typical portable setup, QSL via M0MOL. 
Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Females in Radio. Now some very important news from Shirley, VK5YL. Hello, and on behalf of our Lara Publicity Officer, Jennifer, VK3WQ, I am forwarding information regarding our Alara meet. Sadly, it has been decided by the Alara Committee that we will have to cancel the 2021 Bendigo Alara meet in October this year due to the uncertain nature of the COVID virus and the problems we might face if we proceed again with the preparations for it. We deeply regret having to make this decision, but feel that it is the safest one for all concerned. At present, we are hoping to have our next Alara meet in 2023, which would bring it back in line with our three-year cycle. But at this stage, no destination has been decided on. We realise that this will come as a great disappointment to many of you, but hope that you will understand. Stay safe and 33. From Jennifer, VK3WQ and Shirley, VK5YL. Thanks, Shirley. Now to Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Yota. RSGB have announced the next Youngsters on the Air talk. It will take place on the 25th of February at 1900 UTC. In this newest episode, the team will present the main topic on Gone Exploring. They plan to discuss activities like Islands on the Air, Summits on the Air and Worldwide Flora and Fauna in Amateur Radio. It will be followed by a Q&A session with the presenters. They'll be streaming live again on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch channels. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F in sunny Bendigo. Across Australia from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service, which can be heard in the ACT and Canberra region through our Mount Janini repeaters on 146.950 and 438.050 every Sunday at 0900 local. On behalf of the Canberra Region Amateur Radio Club broadcast team, this is Amanda, VK1WX. 2020 social scene, and it's still on. When? Today, Feb 21, at the Italian Sports Club Werribee, it's the WARC Hamfest. VK6, the Peel Amateur Radio Club swap meet, is March 6 at Mandurah Bowling Club. Redfest 2021 happens April 10 in VK4. Mayhem at the Wyong Racecourse, May 30. Alara meet 2021 at Bendigo in October has been cancelled, as we heard from Shirley. And... Rosebud, the Radio Fest by Spark, 9.30am, November 14. So now, until we meet again next week, I'm Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au.